today. The large food company Kellogg's lost a court case which got to appeal following new restrictions by the government on sugar as part of tackling the obesity crisis. The company took the government to court, claiming that the new food rules did not take into account the added mass of the milk that most people have in their cereal. After losing the court case, Kellogg said that they were disappointed and their managing director said it makes little sense to us that consumers will be able to buy other products like donuts and chocolate spreads on promotion but not many types of breakfast cereals. This court case happened following a new law last October that foods deemed high in fat, sugar or salt will be banned from prime spots such as checkouts, store entrances, ILMs and their online equivalents. Kellogg's are particularly annoyed because popular brands such as Crunchy Nut Corn Flakes and Fruit and Fibre are classified as high sugar in their dry form which is now being penalised. Young teens in food should be laughed to leave a number of cinemas following a TikTok trend which has encouraged them to mimic food during screenings of Minions and Rising Crew. Many screenings have been ruined because of vandalism, objecting thrown and abuse of staff. Cinema, cinema managers have reported young children kneeling in tears. Many cin cinemas have provided refunds. Now for some sad news. The famous YouTuber Techno Blaze died at the age of 23. He died after a year long battle with cancer. Techno Blaze was known for his Minecraft videos, and a lot of his videos were recorded on the Hypixel server. However, we was also in a lot of videos which included fellow Minecraft YouTubers such as Dream and Real Search. He will be widely remembered for his gentle voice and his catchphrase Techno Blaze never dies. I will now hand over to Viren and Finn who have the sports news. Thank you, Sam. Firstly, the summer transfer window is still in full flow. Early Haaland has signed for Manchester City from Borussia Dortmund for £51 million pounds plus bonuses at the start of the transfer window, which is rumoured for a while before the transfer window started. He will be following in his father Alfie Haaland's footsteps and pay for assistance. Man City fans will hope that he can adjust to the Premier League quickly and continue his blistering form maintaining the Bundesliga. Sadio Mane signed for Bayern Munich earlier in the transfer window following Liverpool's Champions League final loss. He will be on £250,000 a week, but the signing fee was a surprisingly low £35.1 million. Richardson, Calvin Phillips and Gabriel Hizzas have also moved to Tottenham, Manchester City and Arsenal respectively, with Darwin Nunes having moved to Liverpool in an £85 million move. News just in, England's men's cricket team have completed a record seven wicket win over India to level the series with a fifth rearranged best. Moving 119 to win at close last night, Yorkshireman Joe Root and John Bester scored centuries as England cruised to victory before lunch on day five. They chased the 378 with an England record. Despite a famous win, the host performance will be overshadowed by reports of racism and day four. In Wimbledon news, Novak Djokovic will be playing Janet Sinner on centre court today whilst Cameron Norrie will attempt to become the first British man to reach the Wimbledon semi-finals since 2016, when he faces the Belgian David Goffin in Court 1 today at 4 past 2. Tune in to BBC Tuesday or watch it on BBC iPad. Tomorrow, at 8pm, England will play Austria in the first match of the upcoming London series. This competition will last until the 31st of July and is likely to see new champions crowned Spain, England and France placed more likely to win than the reigning champions the Netherlands who won in 2017. England are also hosting fixtures mainly taking place in Old Trafford, Wembley and the Brentford Community Arena. Finally, some local sports news. Pitch and Boys School will be playing in their Dream Year 10 Athletics final this Saturday at Chelsea Park in Abingdon. The Intermediate Boys Squad qualified after competing at Lee Valley where they were crowned champions with a score of 518 points. We wish the squad all the very best of luck. That's it for Sports News, now back to Sam Molly. Thank you, Barry and Finn. There's certainly plenty of sports to look forward to this week. Now we're going to Finn, who's going to tell us about the whole school read at Hitchin Boys School. Since May half term, the English department has been running a whole school read with years 7 and 8. The book chosen for this event was After the War by Tom Palmer, a story inspired by the 300 children who travelled to the Lake District after being liberated from Nazi concentration camps in Poland at the end of World War II. 
Many events have taken place to promote the reading of this book, including a visit from Tom Palmer, a homework project and activities in English lessons. In this report, we will talk to Tom Palmer himself, as well as to several students who've read After the War. Good afternoon, Tom. Thank you for coming to Hitchin Boys School. I'd Thanks. like to ask Sorry, you mate. a few questions. Um, I love writing about both. I started off with sport, and I love sport, particularly football, but when it comes to war, just because it's real people and real things, that's what I really enjoy the most. Um, and it's just like, you get, I get really obsessed with, from around about the First World War or the Second World War. There's so many interesting facts there, whereas football's all right, but it's less meaningful, isn't it, than war. Did you always want to be an author when you were younger? No, I disliked reading a lot when I was young and um, I struggled to read and what got me into reading was my mum getting me to read about football, um, about Leeds United in particular um, and that's what encouraged me to read in newspapers and magazines and books and then gradually I got confident reading about football then I started to read more broadly um, and then I wanted to be a writer because it was the last thing I wanted to be until I was roughly 20. But once I was 20, then I wanted to be, be a writer. My favourite ever writer is called Emily Bronte, um, and she wrote a book called Wuthering Heights. Um, and it's my favourite book because I used to think that to be an author, you had to be from London and posh and clever and all these things that I'm not. And then I read this book by Emily Bronte, who lived about five miles from where I live, um, and wrote about people from around where we are from, although she was doing it 150 years, or 200 years ago. Um, so definitely um, Emily Bronte. Thank you for your time, Tom. Thank you, thanks for the questions. And for the book after the war I think after the war gives a unique insight on what happens to children after the Holocaust what do you think of the book after the war uh, the book is a fantastic book and it also creates a sense of understanding and empathy for those who experienced negativity during the war I think it's a really important story but also in the way it's told and the way it's presented um, gives all readers not just children an insight into the horrors of the war and the consequences of the war as well. Finally, here's today's weather room for you. The weather in Hitchin is at high at 29 and a low at 24. Back to you in the studio. Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Thank you and good night.